Welcome to Joy of Business Radio, hosted by Joy of Business facilitators from around the world, with special shows from Simone Millicis, the founder and creator of Joy of Business. Are you bored or dissatisfied with your work or business? Joy of Business is an invitation to a completely new way of creating. Did you know your business and job can actually be fun and joyful? If what you are currently doing isn't working for you, listen in to this show full of pragmatic tools from Access Consciousness, which change everything in business, from money to finance, staff, creativity, productivity, communication, and beyond. Joy of Business Radio, weekly on Om Times Radio. Hello and welcome to this week's Joy of Business radio show. I am your host this week, Melanie Mead. I am a JCF and I am on the Joy of Business creators team where I work with the JCFs who facilitate classes all over the world and help them and assist them get their business out there and get these tools to people like you that are asking for something completely different. And that's kind of what I'm going to talk about this week is one aspect of getting your business out into the world. And it's actually social media and the way that I see it and the way that I use it and my attitude towards it, which sometimes can be a little bit different to other people and maybe not as well. So I'm actually calling this show The Digital Detox Done Different because this time of year with Christmas and everything, and I know right now we're probably not looking at diets, we're probably looking at overindulging in Christmas dinner and food and meeting friends and having a wonderful time and you know once you've overdone it and it's coming to the new year you start to look at maybe hitting the gym or you know eating better you know you've been naughty you've you've had a great time and you're kind of done you know that time when you know you have a fill of it and it's time to to do something else and The one thing I love is to actually have a healthy attitude towards using social media in your business which is what I'm going to talk to you about today. So rather than just digitally detoxing for a weekend or a week and putting the phone away and then get back into it, I want to talk to you about um, this positive attitude that you can actually take towards your business and using social media and applying that every day of the week, every day of the year and actually creating something with it. Because what I find is when I talk to people is they get overwhelmed um, they either make social media the answer or it's pointless. So they're for it or they're against it. They're resisting. Then they're wondering why something isn't working. And actually, social media is an addition to your business. It can be an addition to your life too. Um, a lot of people I speak to um, use it for their business. And just a little bit of background with me. I actually started in social media. I still do social media. I do a lot of other things since. But um. I started with content creation and then just playing around in a bit of Facebook and things. So what I actually did is I taught myself over the years, uh, kind of relatively self-taught in the area of social media, the way that I watched it, the way that it progressed, the way that I saw it and everything I learned. I didn't actually learn it from one place. I kind of looked into different areas, followed some of the people that were the best in their business and some people that did the whole marketing overview And what I did is I started to create it in a way that I find that it works and in a way that works for me. And I've actually used this to grow and develop a business quite rapidly, Um, working with social media for people like Joy of Business, Small Melissa's Access Consciousness, um, people that have a very strong online presence in the area of personal development, which is the area that I thrive in with marketing and um, content creation and social media. Um, But a lot of what I will talk about today can be applied to different businesses, um, just even the way that you view and see social social media and actually what might be possible when you use this as an additional tool to your business and to what you already know. Um, The first thing that I would start with and the most important one, it's actually it starts with you. It starts with your attitude towards it and it actually starts with what you'd like to create in the world and the way that you would like to create it. And there's a million ways things can be done. There's a million ways things can be shared. And we'll just boil it right back down to where it actually starts with you and your attitude. I remember when I started, like, I wouldn't consider myself technically savvy by any stretch of the imagination. 
And I remember somebody was like, oh, could you schedule a post on Facebook? And I nearly absolutely freaked out. I was like, I have no idea how to do that. That is so beyond what I know because I was just used to Facebook on just the personal level, not on the business level. And I thought I'd need to take a big giant course to learn how to schedule a post on Facebook. It turned out I asked a question. Somebody showed me it's a button. You press it. You select a time and date and you move on. And you got to be willing just to to knuckle down and just maybe look at a few different parts and pieces. You can also hire people to do it, but just knuckle down and just say, hey, you know, I'd like to give this one a shot for my business. Um, I'm going to let you into a secret from the get go with social media. There's always new things coming out. There's new platforms or, you know, Facebook or Instagram or whoever come up with this new fandangled, you know, add on that you can do or this new trick or this new button you can press. And there is no formal announcement. The thing about social media, it's you keep an eye on, well, when you work in it. So when you're going to talk to an expert, if you're going to be hiring somebody to do it, um, and if it's something you're going to do yourself, it's good to be aware of this. There is never really an official announcement. There are articles written. There might be something posted. The platform itself might pop up a notification for you to let you know something new is there. But it changes so fast. You have to be able to move with the changes that go with it. Um, That might sound a little overwhelming to people that never actually want to do the physical act of social media. But it's actually really good just to have in your awareness this can move fast and furious when it wants to. And if you found right there for a moment that that's just even just too much to take, it's actually fine. If you're hiring other people, my top tip there is just to make sure that their fingers on the pulse, that they're progressive, they're not going to know everything. You might even come to them with the new thing that your friend told you that was out. That's cool. It's their willingness to dig in there and have a look at it and if it works for your business, use it. Just because it's out doesn't mean you have to do it. You know, the, you could have a business where um, a boomerang on Instagram might not be appropriate to what you're selling. So don't feel it necessary to use it. It does work to your advantage to use the, the newest tools the platform sends out. But at the end of the day, bottom line, it's always moving. It's always changing. And just like anything else in business, you have to go with it. When you look back over the years, even like the last 120 years or whatever, when you look at everything that came out, when you look at electricity, you look at the light bulb, you look at um, print, you look at photographs, you look at silent movies, look how far we've come. Everything moved, evolved and changed. And it turned out not to be a bad thing all the time. You know what I mean? And social media can get a bad rap. And I wasn't around back in the day when, you know, silent movies became spoken movies. I'm not sure if people had reservations about things or whatever. But the bottom line is, is that how you use it and the way that you view it and how you engage with it is actually going to make a key difference. And I get that people look at what goes on and what's not working with social media. I can get a bad rap with things like cyberbullying or people living fake lives or whatever. But my attitude is with everything in life, it starts with you, not just social media. You know what I mean? It's like the attitude you have towards life, the way that you look at it, the way that you're going to engage with it and the way you can take or leave things will actually create something different. So while somebody else is out there, you know, killing it on Facebook or doing their amazing YouTube videos or whatever, and you see the success that they're having, doesn't necessarily mean that that particular platform is for you. It is really, really good to have a look around at people in the business that you're in and even people that are outside the business to see what they're creating, how they're creating it, what they're using, how is it going for them. Creatively, it's good to watch what's going on does not necessarily mean that you have to do that. Um, The second thing that I'm going to share with you, and I think these two points or tips in this first part of the show are actually vital before you start moving forward with anything, um, is actually like, why are you using social media? A lot of people, you know, will look, put up a post and say, um, 
oh, this isn't working. I've got no likes. I've got no shares. This is totally and utterly pointless. Uh, my question there is, well, what were your expectations when you started? What did you think that social media was going to do for you? Was it going like some people do honestly think it's the answer to their business and some people think I'll put up a Facebook event and, you know, I'll automatically get sign ups. It's it's a bit of a bigger picture than that. And I can share tips and tricks throughout the show today to actually just to get you into that mindset that, you know, you do actually detox from that crazy mentality of what some people have about social and what some people think. It's so easy to get onto Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and use all these free applications to add to your business um, and then just think that they're going to show up and do the goods, you know, like it's here's the answer. Now we're good. Here's some free advertising. Let's go. Um, that's not the case. So for me, the purpose of social media is actually this question. You actually get to have a conversation with the world. Social media is online. There's actually no limits to who that can technically reach, more or less, give or take. What conversation would you like to be having? And that's where you start. So if you have a great product or you've got, you know, you teach a great class or whatever it is that you're selling. Yes, you can absolutely sell that in the midst of what's going on. But what conversation are you having? Are you talking about different possibilities? Are you talking about wellness? You know, people, this sounds a bit like, um, somebody laughed at me when I said this the other day, their face dropped a little bit. With social media, people don't necessarily care about you and what it is that you're bringing to the table. They actually care about the feeling that it gives them. So somebody that maybe went through the same business struggle as they went through gives them that feeling of security, um, that feeling of possibility, that feeling of hope that somebody's done it before and, you know, you can inspire them and kind of move them in a direction that they know is possible for them and just having that kind of moral support. Um, people that are into, let's say, yoga and wellness you're showing them a different possibility into feeling good in their body, to having a healthy mind. Even though you might be sharing your story and engaging with them, ultimately what the other person is looking for is what they can get out of it. And not necessarily in a real greedy way, but that's what a lot of us do. Like picture yourself in a restaurant and you're looking at a menu. Like generally you're looking for an element of satisfaction. You're, you know, it's a cold day, a warm, hearty soup might do, you know, it's a hot summer, um, a lovely salad might kind of hit the spot that day. You know what I mean? So it's kind of it's it's that kind of thing where people are they're actually looking for something. Very few people will idly go by and just, you know, pick something randomly. People are usually looking for something. So what is it that you have to share with them? What conversation could you be having with them on social media? that gets you out into the world and sharing what it is that you know and the message that you have for them and the change you can bring to their life. So we're up to our first ad break. So I'll leave you and I'll talk to you on the other side. No one needs to have a money problem, especially you. Yeah, did you hear that? You. You have an unlimited and mostly unaccessed capacity to create money and a financial reality that works for you. Simone Millicis has a brand new book. It's called Getting Out of Debt Joyfully. And right now, when you go to gettingoutofdebtjoyfully.com, if you pre-order the book, you'll get a free online course. What if you can create money in ways no one else can? Just go to gettingoutofdebtjoyfully.com to get your copy today. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Aloha. My name is Jennifer O'Neill, and I'd like to invite you to come join me every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time for my show, Spirit Chat. Spirit Chat focuses on simplifying the process of using the spiritual tools and gifts you were born with 
in a way that fits into your everyday life. I also teach different techniques that will help you learn how to navigate the spirit realm and empower you on your own spiritual journey. So join me this Wednesday as I guide you through the spirit world. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. The cutting edge of conscious radio. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. And welcome back to part two of this week's Joy of Business radio show with me, your host, Melanie Mead. And I am talking about digital detox done different. This show is all about having just a happy, healthy attitude and a flexible attitude, actually, with social media um, for your life and your business. And in the first part of the show, um, I just kind of took you through the beginnings of it Um kind of where people start with it and this thing about having this information this message this conversation that you're going to share with the world um it can fall into a couple of categories and a a lot of the way that it works on social media it can be to educate it can be to inspire and it can also be information people are looking for um as i said in the first half of the show it's not necessarily always about you. It's actually about what you're sharing and what they can get from it. So you have your message. You have this conversation you want to have with the world. The first thing I find that comes up next with people that are wanting to use social media platforms is they kind of get bogged down in trying to get the message right. My attitude actually is is, is to just start. Um, generally speaking, a lot of the way that you'll probably be getting business already, especially if you're into things like coaching, um, like, you know, life coaching, yoga or, you know, different things. It's like it's generally just the way that you are, the way that you speak, the conversations that you have with people. And social media is actually just an extension of that. So if you think of the questions that people actually ask you. They come to you because they know you're the person to ask. They're curious. They get a hit that maybe you have some kind of information for them. And that's why they're asking you. So you can actually use social media to um, speak to that, to answer those questions and share bits and pieces. And from the get go, um, social media, when you're kind of building a business page and growing a following or whatever, it's never always advanced information. And I'll talk about that later on in the show, but it's largely about introducing pe- you to people, giving them basic information and there are, you kind of move things on to different areas after. So it's about creating content that um, that tweaks people's interests, that gets them into what you're doing and creating, you know, that place in their world where they know you're the person to come back to to check you out maybe you have the information for something else that popped up if you take social media for example um, people have developed a rapport with people that when there's a change or when they're looking for more information that they'll go back to this particular person that specializes in a a, like let's say Instagram you know that they're constantly going to go back and look for their inspiration and be educated on Instagram by people that they know like and trust And that's actually what you're looking to build. And that's generally breaking it all right down. It's actually down to being you. You know, people generally can smell a fake a mile away. And I think that's what puts a lot of people off social media, kind of going back to that fake life scenario where people always say, oh, they put their fake life up on Facebook. And it's that thing where people smell a rash. So, you know, I think that's the bottom line. I think it's key. Now, we did something really fun in Venice at JCF training um, this year in July. We were talking about things like social media, things about doing videos, and it brings up a lot for people. Putting yourself online brings up a lot for people. So if you have a real issue with, you know, posting yourself on Facebook, get somebody else to do it. They have less of a point of view. They see you for the brilliance that you are. 
and they can do it for you and it'll they'll do it a lot quicker than you mulling over something for a very long time to post. The other thing I would say is whether you're doing social media yourself or you're hiring somebody else to do it, there's a good chance you're going to be creating content. So what we did in Venice was we got the JCFs to go out and all make a really bad video. And what people did was is they actually made this really bad video in a way that it was their worst nightmare. So that, you know, you know, bad camera angles, terrible lighting, dithering around, you know, um, being silly or kind of coming across as stupid or dumb or not informative. And people laugh so hard. The next video they made, they actually found a lot easier to be themselves. They'd gotten over all these judgments of, you know, what it was like and they actually learned to laugh at themselves. And there is that place where if you're going to wait for perfection, you're going to be waiting a very long time. Even for me personally, I worked behind the scenes for a very long time in social media. I wouldn't be out in the forefront creating my content. And that's going to change in 2019. Like there's a now is the time for me to come out from behind the scenes. So you might see me make a video or whatever. And I'm going to have the same thing as pretty much what other people have going on. It's just that I have the knowledge and background to know what it takes to make a good video. I was only talking to somebody last week about putting themselves up online and I was like, look, I know the way it should be done. I know all the boxes to tick. But once you get in front of a camera, not everyone can function, you know, tick, tick, tick. All this is done. Great intro, call to action, you know, information, X, Y, Z. So just get going, get started, get comfortable, start talking and you'll find a flow. So the longer you wait for perfection, the longer you're genuinely going to be waiting to actually use the free platforms um, of Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and all these kind of things to actually start using it to contribute to your business. So now hopefully we have detoxed from being a technophobe because I still don't know everything about technology. So either you get stuck in and you go for it or you hire someone. The next thing is to detox from being totally uncomfortable with creating content. Um, And for some people too, it's getting photographs taken and stuff. And like I just said there, it's it's a stage where you just go for it and you're going to have to laugh at yourself. Um, You'll be waiting for perfection for quite a long time. Social media is always moving and changing. And, you know, if you're going to try to wait to to be ready, you're always going to be on the catch up game. So there there is a part where you just take a shot on yourself and, and you go out and you do it. Um, I remember earlier this year I had um, I'd lost my voice actually um, for quite a long time and it, it wasn't very you know clear and I'd become a JCF and I could do a drive business radio show and it wouldn't be something I'd be particularly comfortable with and I remember I just did the show I just did it like my voice was audible it was good but I couldn't talk for long periods of time um, and I just ended up doing it and you know what Taking that first step, just it gets you in the groove. It gets you going. It it gets you moving. And I think like that, when you're not sure where to start, just start. And that top tip of go with what people are asking you for. Like if people are asking you a particular question about a particular thing, start there. You've talked about it a lot. You've shared it. You know, people are interested. Start sharing that and, and grow it from there. It doesn't have to stay that way forever. Um, The next thing to detox from is the comparison game. So it is great to look at other accounts. You can get great ideas for creating or, you know, what's going on out there, what people are talking about. Read the comments in Instagram or Facebook and YouTube of what people are saying to the video. Never mind the nasty ones. Pay no attention to that. It's it's a free platform. People find it easy to express themselves a little bit more liberally. What I'm saying is you will find people asking for more in the comments. You will see what people are, the information they're looking for, the content that they love to divulge. Go and have a look. But don't compare somebody's a bajillion likes and a godzillion comments and a trillion shares to your 10 or 20. It's actually not the biggest deal. And that actually is something that people find super duper weird. Um, They think the more followers they have, the more likes and shares and comments they have, the better they're doing. And in theory, the theory of social media is to give people what they want. So the algorithm works with Melanie 
loves watching these videos. It can tell the things I like and comment and share. And the job of Google, the job of Facebook, the job of YouTube is to actually show you more of what you're interested in and put it in front of you. Bottom line. So it's not about going viral. It's um, It does help, you know, if you have an, a, a nice, decent following with a good, healthy engagement on your account. But what you could be sharing with the world maybe only a small portion of people are interested in it. Like I remember listening to a podcast uh, a while back about um, a lady who created an extremely successful business as a cat groomer. Like she had really strong social media and grew a very healthy business in cat grooming. Now, how many people groom a cat? So if you were to judge her success by having, let's just say, 2,000 followers, she's probably doing a lot more business than somebody with 10,000 followers. What you're actually looking for is people that champion you, people that love what you do, people that like and engage and that are actually, and here's the secret, are willing to go off social media and pursue you, show up to your class, come into your salon, um, you know, buy that digital product you have because they trust you. And that's where the difference lies. So the comparison game can, you know, fall a little flat and, you know, doesn't always work so well. It really isn't about selling on social. Like a lot of people will, you know, put their graphic up for their latest product class or sale, which isn't always a bad thing. Um, But that's not the deal clincher. That's information to let them know, hey, I've got this going on. The, the It's actually the work in between that actually converts people that brings them over that gets them to sign up for that sale or go to that class and I think it's a grave mistake a lot of people make and I see it a lot in Facebook groups where people will just share a link to their latest class they'll pop it in there and they'll leave it there they don't give it an introduction they don't even bother engaging in the group or having general conversations they just think it's sufficient to pop in you know their latest goings on and that's enough for people to sign up and that's not always the case Again, it'll come back to the no like and trust factor that you're going to be building over time. It's a bit like a brick and mortar business that way where where football comes in the door. It's not that much different. It's just another area to play in. And it's actually just a little bit farther reaching. It's worldwide. And a lot of it is free. A lot of it is free and online and accessible for people to find. So here we are. We're at the end of part two of the show. So I'll see you on the other side with a couple of other ways to digitally detox and create social media that works for you and your business. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Tune in to the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World with me, host Robin Fritz, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern. I'll cover personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice, and more, all to help you tap your own intuitive and healing skills. No ifs, ands, or buts. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Putting the fun back in business. Wake up, go to work, come home, watch TV, go to bed, repeat. Business, work, your job, hate it, bored, want to leave it? Or business, work, your job, fun, play, joy, fun. Which would you like to choose? You may not know this, but business, 
your job, work can actually be fun. Shake up your business routine. Check out my three-part free video series on putting the fun back in business. Go to accessjoebusiness.com forward slash fun and put the fun back in business. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. And welcome back to part three of this week's Joy of Business radio show on On Times with me, your host, Melanie Mead. And I have been taking you through the show on a digital detox done different. Um, it's basically changing your attitude and detoxing from all those judgments that we have about social, about us and social media, about the way that we see social media in the world and the way we will just separate maybe from it for various different reasons. And this part of the show, I actually just want to talk about um, this overwhelm that comes up for people um, about social media platforms. There are so many. There are so many, I probably couldn't list them off. Some of them are huge. We all know Facebook. We all know Instagram. We all know YouTube. And that's just a start. There's Snapchat, there's LinkedIn, there's all these different types. And basically, people get this kind of overwhelm on trying to have everything on everything. So what I want to share with you here is if you looked, and I'm just going to use um, YouTube, um, Instagram and Facebook for this example. Um, there are different places where different kinds of conversations happen. Like, for example, you might post um, a quote graphic on Facebook and on Instagram. You can't really do that on YouTube, you know. And when you look at things like Instagram and things like Facebook, there's a different way of communicating. So it's not always the same. There are, um, like on Instagram, there are restrictions with where you can share a link. Um, a lot of people still will insist on putting a link inside a description on Instagram. It's not live. People cannot click it. So if it's a big, really super long, you know, weird numbered and letter link, there's not much they can do with that. You can't really expect people to um, memorize it or try at least to copy and paste it because that's not the setup for Instagram. Instagram's like a digital magazine. Primarily the way that you see it when it pops open, it's squares of pictures when you go to Instagram stories their videos and images with text on it and there are other advanced options that go in there on sharing links and stuff but that's a conversation for another day basically what I'm trying to say is it looks quite different to Facebook um, Facebook can have you know longer form videos it has events it can you know um, premiere videos it can share things live in ways that Instagram can't YouTube again, you can post a square graphic. Um, but it, the thing about YouTube, which sets it apart from Facebook and Instagram, generally speaking, it's actually like a search engine. People will go to YouTube to answer a question, to they're wondering how to do something or, you know, getting information on something like, for example, how to use YouTube, how to, you know, do a story on Instagram. You'll generally find a lot of stuff saved on YouTube, it has a longer history. The stuff kind of, you could put something up there from a year or two ago and it could last the test of time up there. It can still be relevant. It could still be there. On Facebook, a video that you put up two years ago and on Instagram, a video you put up two years ago will look very different. So it is actually, who are you talking to? Are they on that platform? Because if they're not using Instagram, you're, you're speaking to nobody. If nobody is into that particular niche area that you're talking about, this cat grooming business or whatever you're thinking about, they're the considerations to have. Now, don't get too worried and don't get too bogged down. A lot of people are on Instagram. A lot of people are on Facebook. A lot of business to business is on LinkedIn. But it's just something to consider. Are the people that you're looking to have the conversation with there? Are you providing content for that platform that is relevant to that platform. You can share some stuff between Facebook and Instagram that are similar or the same. And then sometimes it just doesn't work. Like that real hard sell, 
does not really work as well on an Instagram feed. Um, the latest way that they're talking about actually sharing and selling a little more is actually in stories. So it's a totally different tactic and it's a bit more personalized. It's just that little bit different. It's different to what we've been used to before with Facebook and transferring those kind of slapdash attitudes to Instagram doesn't actually always create more. People don't like to feel sold to. It's it's like when you go into the store and the pushy salesperson comes up and you're like, just, you know, leave me alone. Please don't come over here. Or your gut instinct is to leave. If that's the kind of attitude you have to social across the board, um, that's the way people are going to feel, you know, and, and that's what it is. And it's not about tricking people at all, but it is very much about the no like and trust factor again. And there's nothing wrong with telling people you have um, a product, a service, whatever it is. It's just the manner in which you approach people. And when you take that pushy approach, it's quite hard. So it's actually more about being yourself. It is about educating, inspiring, informing people. And again, just to stress it, even though you're showing up and you're delivering the great content, they might come back to you, but it's for what you're sharing it's the feeling that you're giving them. It's the information that you're sharing with them that they can get and apply to their business or apply to their life, whatever, you know, area you're in. And that's what it comes back to at the end of the day. And just to share a story with somebody I know, they love public speaking. They love talking. They could talk to rooms full of people and they wanted to start a video series and they did. They started a video series. They'd put it up on Facebook. They would, you know, every week share something. They would, you know, share tips and tools um, on health and wellness and things like that. And they weren't seeing much of a result. They weren't seeing the likes and shares that they thought they were getting. And they got very frustrated with it. And they were like, you know what? I feel like I'm wasting my time. I'm actually, I'm actually going to stop. And they did. Um... I think maybe fast forward even eight months or something. Um, they were contacted by somebody that actually used to watch their videos and requested a session and uh, various other, you know, things that came along with it. And business opportunities blossomed from this conversation. And funnily enough, it's funny how things happen because everything always seems to happen at once. Two other people actually contacted them as well. and. They got more business from it too. Now, these are from videos that were created ages ago. But that person showing up every week, and this is the way that worked for them. They liked videos. They loved talking. It was a way that they engaged. Um, eight months or so later, people actually started coming to them for business. They said, you know, I like your stuff. I didn't always hit the like button or share it, but I did watch it and I did listen. And I was very grateful for what you shared. So anywhere you're also looking for that immediate return, you know, you'll be slightly off the mark. It can be a long game. It's like a relationship. It's like a friendship or whatever. And with this person showing up every week doing a video, posting, I'm pretty sure, probably nearly the same day every week. It's almost like showing up for a date. You know, it's like somebody comes, they take you out. You you know, you meet at 7 p.m. on a Friday and you're going to go for this lovely dinner and it's going to be really nice. And then maybe four weeks pass and you don't hear from them, you're going to start losing interest. You're going to start going, mm, I'm pretty sure I'm not high on their priority list. You know what I'm saying? So it's something similar with with um, social media. It's this showing up regularly, sharing what you have with them. Consider it almost like dating. And it actually works really well. Now, quality over quantity is another thing. So I, I sound like I'm slightly contradicting myself ever so slightly, but it's like, it's kind of go back to the gym on the 1st of January. You're going to go, I'm going to go seven days a week, you know, and then you you, you just like, you do it for two weeks and you take a night off because you're going to go to the movies and then you find it very hard to get back into it again. It's like pace yourself. Just get out there, do what you like doing and please have absolutely no expectation of what it's going to create because I think that's where we trip ourselves up. That's where we do what this person did and stopped doing their video series that people were actually enjoying, but they weren't actually getting the information back the way that you would think by having likes and shares on social media. But it turned out in the long game, 
fast forward a couple of months, when people were ready to avail of what that person had, they were a go-to person for it. And it did create and add more to their business. So anywhere you're looking for the quick result, the end game, the, you know, I'm going to do this one thing and I'm going to put it absolutely everywhere, might not be the best um, way to start. And start in small increments, start with one platform, start getting used to it. You have to get used to having content created. You have to be creating content. You don't, you know, just hire somebody else to do it and then just walk away and they have to do everything doesn't mean your face has to be plastered on everything or a video for everything but there is this like inclusion of you in the business and content from you to add to the platforms because ultimately well I'm speaking to an individual here but also if, if that is a business it's the business's stuff too um and that's something like you really need to consider when you're doing it it is actually having that conversation and developing conversations and engagement and for all the world if you kind of look at that whole relationship kind of idea as well it's that kind of idea now people will only need you for as long as your um service is is relevant to them if it's something to do with pregnancy you're going to get maybe a good nine months out of them but don't expect them when their kid is two or three to actually need the maternity stuff that you were selling back when they were pregnant it's all relative it's all you know kind of what's going on for them right now but people do like to know and trust brands they know every time that they have a can of coca-cola it's going to be refreshing or you know what i mean and it's it's that kind of thing um it'll come back to you always showing up being you again i cannot say it enough educating inspiring informing people giving them that something that they're satiated with that 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 it gives them that thing that they've been asking for, that they've been looking for, and they will trust that you will have information for them with what they're looking for. I hope that's clear. I really do. I hope that makes a lot of sense because it's something that can go slightly amiss. And it is, again, just bear in mind when you're sharing that information with people, think of the pushy salesperson. Nobody really, really enjoys that experience. And social media is an experience. It's a worldwide experience. It's a global experience. You will come across all different types of businesses, different types of people. And that includes people that are going to comment on your stuff. And I know a lot of people actually won't show up on social media out of the fear of any kind of backlash. And trust me, a lot of those people, they just have something to vent and they're going to vent it. So don't always pay attention to what's going on. If you're showing up as you and you're giving people the information that you know contributes to the world you really can't go wrong but if you're going to be abusing people online that's a whole different story so this show is flying by i might have to do another one of these in the future so we're actually coming up to the last part of the show so i'll see you on the other side What do you hate about business and do you want to change it? If you don't want to change anything about your job or business, stop listening. You're all good. If you'd like to have money just for the fun of it and stop the negative self-talk, check out Joy of Business. This is about knowing what you know about business and creating more than you can imagine. Access Joy of Business 101 classes offered around the world. Go to accessjoybusiness.com forward slash 101. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Om Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.omtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Om Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Hello, I'm Lisa Berry. Join me every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Light on Living. A chance to see new, 
hear different, and feel more as I shine the spotlight on all the ways to lighten the load of life's challenges. Light on Living is your link to that new way you're looking for, that new understanding that will enhance your life, and that positive connection that will support your growth. So join me and you'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. And welcome back to the final part of this week's Joy of Business radio show with me, your host, Melanie Mead. Um, Talking all about a digital detox done different. Uh, I hope the show was helpful. The reason that I called the digital detox done different really was to kind of move beyond the judgments and the stuck points and the resistance that we have on day to day with things like social media. There's lots of reasons we will not create on it. And there's lots of expectations we can have when we do. Um, So hopefully I demystified a lot of that and we actually kind of go beyond that resistance and into a different place of possibility and actually using social media to our advantage in a very healthy way, with a very healthy attitude and also like maximising our experience and our time on it. You know, not to be on it 24-7 all the time so one of the tips I'm going to share with you here very very quickly is you can batch content you know you don't need to take a picture that day to put on Instagram you know what I mean so you can actually go take several pictures in different places and different things whatever it is you're communicating with the world and share them at different times some real-time stuff is great not always necessary there are hacks that you can use to not make life so difficult and my job is social media. I am on it an awful, awful lot. But nobody should be on it more than me if their business is not social media. And especially if you're hiring somebody to do it. You should not be on it all the time, but it is about maximizing that experience. And I'm going to let you into the top, I think, trick of social media. The one reason you should be on it. It's great to be liked. It's great to have great content. It is great to change people's lives by sharing content on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on Snapchat, on I can go forever, whatever platform people are on. In particular, if it's a business, what you're looking for is for them to come back to social by all means and engage and like and share. But then you're also looking to move them on. And this is the part that people miss. So if you're not getting the bajillion likes and shares, but you're actually getting people to convert, you know, go to your website, purchase products, you're actually on to a good thing here. You're getting people walking into your shop, going to your salon, you know, contacting you, thanking you so much for the stuff that you shared, looking for a a session or whatever it is they're looking for. This is where we're at. And in the natural... um, logistics of marketing you're probably going to have more eyeballs in your social media than coming into your shop or purchasing a product but this is what you're looking for and if you go back to the story that I shared before the last ad break about um, the person that I knew that did video series and stopped and it took uh, people I think it was eight months to come back to them it can take time when they're ready for you and you are what they're asking for they will come looking for you And I think that is when you know that it's time well spent on social, sharing that information and talking to people. And this is the part where you might change lives and people might never tell you because they're watching you on social. But there are people that are asking for more and asking for what you have. You know what I mean? It's kind of like if a dentist did um, Facebook posts or Facebook ads or whatever they wanted to do. We only go to the dentist when we actually require something for our teeth. It's the same idea for anything else. It's the same for um, a business coaching session. It's the same for a haircut. It's the same for, you know, getting your nails done. It's the same for getting your makeup done or whatever it is that you're actually looking for. When you look at it from that perspective, that immediate return on posting something on Facebook or Instagram or wherever it is, um, is not really measurable. It's not really the thing that you should be looking at 
Um, it is a place to have a great conversation. It's a place to share. And you will refine and finesse over time your content. If it's visually, if it's a, a photograph, if it's good quality, if you have hate having pictures being taken and you might feel or look a little bit awkward, you'll get more comfortable as, as pictures go on in future. And to be honest, people can find that quite endearing. You're a person just like them. It's not about having all the answers. And it's the same with me here. I don't have the answers to everything in social media. But the one thing I do know is to ask questions. There are people that will specialise in a lot of particular areas and do them really well. And I, my, my intention is to be aware of everything that's out there. Knowing how majority of it works. But also hiring people to really drill down into real specifics. Um, like things like click funnels and you know all these drip campaigns that go on after like there are people that are great copywriters there are people that are absolutely brilliant at um, graphic design I'm one of these people that can pull everything together I can do an awful lot of content creation but I know when there's time and there is um, something coming up early next year and we required graphics for it and I can do graphics and I just said I'm not doing that I'm actually going to hire a graphic designer because even I know I won't hit the mark on what I'm looking for there. But I know what I'm looking for. I know what will work. And first go, we got exactly what we were looking for. And it's going to be beautiful. And I'm really, really happy with what that's going to create. Now, I don't have um, an expectation that, of the return, but it matches what I'm looking to put out there. And choice creates awareness. It really, really does. So if you're doing videos and you're posting up on youtube or facebook or you're doing the short videos on instagram choice creates awareness and i think just start like we're coming to the end of the year january's around the corner you know fresh resolutions everyone's looking at you know what they're going to change or do different or it's going to be a bigger and better year and it's like choice creates awareness we know where we'd like to go we know where we're heading We can't really decide what it is that's going to show up along the way. So I hope this show this week actually demystified some of the stuff for you. Actually, what I shared with you this week are some of the biggest stumbling blocks that people come across. You think it'd be highly technical things. You think it would be, you know, I don't know how to edit a video or, you know, um, create a graphic or whatever. And there are other things for another day and... Usually there are people you might possibly look to add to your business, hire, you know, contract out for particular things. But the biggest stumbling blocks are the judgments, the resistance that we actually have to social media, the overwhelm that people have when they look at it, um, the expectations people have about it being in their business. And sometimes the time people don't have to give it and ways around it. Now, social media isn't for everyone, but if you're listening to this radio show, there's probably a part of it that is in your world that you find it of a value. And this is where I would say, just go play with it. Take the tips that I've shared. These really are the most major stumbling blocks that I come across when I speak to people. And once you get in the flow and you start doing that, you can go further. You can look at other things. But it really is a long game. It's not, I'll start an Instagram account tomorrow and I'll have, you know, a hundred or a thousand people on it and this many people unliked it and this is a disaster and getting bogged down in the tactics. What I would do is I would look at the bigger picture. And it's like, if I choose this, what will it create? And generally speaking, and I'll go back to the restaurant analogy, Do you ever look at food and know, you just go, oh, I just, I would really, like, this is what I would like to eat today. And then you see something you don't like and go, you know, I'm really not going to eat that. That would be, like, disgusting. That's my idea of hell. I don't feel like that today. It's too hot for it. It's too cold for it. Whatever the story is. Like, they're the kind of what people call instinct that we work off of. It's actually a knowing. It's not um, a conclusion as to what it's going to be or what it's going to look like. But it's actually a knowing that you have. And follow it. You will get an awareness from it. It'll create something for you. You will get more information always. Might not always be a positive result. 
very rarely a disastrous and detrimental result, but just take the piece of information and move on. It's valuable, use it to your advantage and just keep going. But that's the thing with social media like anything else. Please don't let it stop you and please do not resist it. But please don't always feel that you have to go do it. It's not the end of the world if you don't. But if you do, I really do hope that what I shared with you today was helpful and beneficial to you kind of growing and developing things on social media. We can get very much lost in the latest and greatest and what's going on. And this person said this and you must do that. And there are a lot of more details that can be shared and you can kind of chunk it down into other stuff. But this is where to start. And even for people that are using social media for their business right now, I do really hope the tips were helpful. There is a lot more information I can share. There's a lot more areas that could be covered. It is far reaching. But if your business isn't social media, today's radio show will be really helpful for you in moving forward in bringing people into your business to do it. It's really, really important to know that you have something to give. You have something to share. Nobody knows what you know. Yes, sometimes it's very hard to see what it is exactly that you know and other people might see the brilliance in you quicker and that's one of my jobs. I'm actually hired to take what's brilliant about people and make sure that that's shared with the world. So don't rule that out either. So I wish you a very happy new year. It's only just around the corner and a happy Christmas too. Enjoy it. And I look forward to seeing what you create in 2019. Let me know. Until next time, I'm Melanie Mead. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.